Hi everyone, let's do uh, this problem, which is a <clears throat> optimization problem from calculus, where we look at a curve, y equals x squared, which is a parabola, and we try to find uh, a point on the curve closest to the point zero three. So to understand that, it might be a lot better to draw a picture, first of all, of the, of the graph. So here's, well, pretty good, not that good though. That's y equals x squared right there. And we have the point zero three. And we're trying to find a point x, y that's closest to zero three. And what I do is I, I, I draw a line segment there and I call the length of that line segment D. And what we do is we find X, Y such that D is a minimum value. Well, what we can do is we can write, use the distance formula to find, um, to, to express x and y, uh, d in terms of x and y. Maybe I can do a little side thing here. Here's d, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distance formula so that I have as a formula that, as you see in this picture, that d squared is the change of x squared plus the change of y squared. It's the Pythagorean theorem. So the distance formula is using the Pythagorean theorem. And so in this situation, I'll have x minus 0 squared. See, those are the x coordinates that I'm, I'm taking the difference for change in x. And then I have the y coordinates, y and 3. So I'll have the sum of y minus 3 squared. I'll have that, I'll, I'll, have, I'll add that on there. Now, I'm trying to find x and y that minimize d. Notice I didn't bother to take the square root of d, uh, of this d squared expression, and, the, and I don't want to because later on I'm going to take a derivative, and I don't want to take the square root, the derivative of a square root. So, um, just simplifying a little bit, I have d squared equals x squared plus y minus 3 squared. So here we have a formula, and the next step is I'm going to write down a constraint. So if I wanted to find x and y to, to make d minimum, I could just make x zero and y equals 3. But there is a constraint, and um, these are also called constraint problems. So... Um, the constraint is that y equals x squared. So that was just, you know, sitting right in, right in front of us. We have the y equals x squared. And so then we use that to eliminate a variable. And for this one, it seems pretty clear to me that y equals x squared, I'll just replace x squared by y. And now my equation that I left with is a, is a quadratic and, and then in fact you don't need to find use calculus to find the minimum value of a quadratic the minimum value of a quadratic is a um, is the vertex so in fact you could this problem could be in a pre-calc class but let's use let's use calculus here uh, by the way, there is another problem in this in this book. This is from OpenStax Calculus Volume One, which is a open source book, where they have another problem where you're asked, you have this point two zero, and you're trying to find the minimum distance. Well, the resulting equation is a is a cubic polynomial. The, you know when you take when you eliminate no the the result when you eliminate the um, when you when you eliminate the variable is a fourth degree polynomial, and then taking the derivative is a third degree polynomial, and and so um, my 
so what happens is you you can't solve it easily really let me show you a, a little further what i mean so it's not like these always come out easily let me show you why this comes out so easily like i said this is a quadratic you could either find the vertex by pre-calc methods or you can take the derivative and and set it equal to zero and uh that's what i'm doing here but either way we're gonna we're gonna find the minimum how do i know it's a minimum well this is a a this f of y which i'm calling d squared is a down is an upward facing parabola so we know it has a minimum so again notice i have d squared equals y plus parentheses y minus three squared um i'm not i, I could take the square root and, and get an expression for d but I just don't really want to do that because then i have to it's more difficult to find a critical number that way so what i'm doing is actually i'm finding y such that d squared is a minimum it's the same y that makes d a minimum. So it's a, it's a little trick there. But what I was getting at before is that if we, if we, if, if you can try it out, but if you picked a point on the, on the x-axis, it turns out that after eliminating one of the variables, you get a, uh, um, you get a, <laughs> your, your d squared will be a fourth degree polynomial. And then therefore, when you find the critical numbers, you have a third degree polynomial. And, and for the problem that's uh, right before this, 349, that is not an easy one to solve. I mean, you have to use a computer to get an approximation. So anyway, um, this one turns out to be an easier one. But along the x-axis, it's more difficult. Okay, so anyway, I found y equals 5 halves. And then to, to find x, it it's, uh, shouldn't be that big of a deal. We have y equals x squared, so... 5 halves equals x squared. And um, actually, as you can guess, uh, which I didn't always show, and is that, um, but not even guess, you can see that there should be two points that will satisfy this criterion. So it's going to be plus or minus the square root of 5 halves. So that's going to be plus or minus the square root of 5, square root of 2 over 2. So x equals plus or minus square root of 10 over 2. So the answer is uh, the points square root of 10 over 2, 5 halves, negative square root of 10 over 2, 5 halves. So there's two points, which, which we can see anyway, that would be the case on, on this uh, picture here. So, yeah, all right. Um, okay, that's all. Thank you.